Hello Atlanta students and families, I'm Mrs. Smith. And I'm Mrs. Wallach. We're here to tell you about a new way that Atlantis is going to learn about each of our character pillars. Every month we're going to be focusing on one pillar. In October, we're going to start with learning about respect. Tune in each week to listen to a book and talk about how it relates to respect. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse by Kevin Hankies. Lily loved school. I love school. Wait for us. She loved the pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety clickety click down the long shiny hallways. Lily loved the privacy of her very own desk. She loved the fish sticks and chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore glasses on a chain around his neck, and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, howdy. He thought that desks in rows were old fashioned and boring. Do you rodents think you can handle a semicircle? And he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester and Wilson and Vincent. Victor. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. What's with Lily? asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger, and she wrote stories about him, too. During sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line, even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in the class, even if she didn't know the answer. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. On Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. She had gone shopping with her Grammy over the weekend. Lily had a new pair of movie star sunglasses, complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slinger's. And she had three shiny quarters. And best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to our story. Lily had a hard time listening. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time being considerate. Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. The glasses were so glittery, the quarters were so shiny, and the purse played such nice music. 
not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely. Look, everyone, look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. He was not amused. I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there and you can take them home. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone. Her quarters were gone. Her per purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. That afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab. She was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought, and then she became angry. She thought and she thought and she thought some more. Then she became furious. She thought and she thought and she thought a bit longer, and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Big, fat, mean, Mr. Stealing Teacher. Wanted by FBI. P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. Right before the last bell rang, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. When all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slinger. Your quarters are nice and jingly, and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said as she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside and there was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. I'll stay here for a million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything always happen to me? 1051, 1052, 1099. That night, Lily drew a new picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him too. Lily was really, really sorry, so everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her especially incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face down on everyone and everything, even the bugs and the worms. Mr. Slinger said, listen up, I forgive everyone. Lily's mother wrote a note and Lily's father baked some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story and he looked at the picture and he read the note and he sampled the snacks. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you think we should do with this? asked Mr. Slinger. Could we just throw it away? asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. During sharing time, 
Billy demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star glasses. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just about all they could say. Wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She peeked at them often, but did not disturb a soul. Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily's snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher, everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy and she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is when she didn't want to be a dancer or a surgeon, or an ambulance driver, or a diva, or a pilot, or a hairdresser, or a scuba diver.